Some might ask, when I was young, I stopped prayers for three years. Should I pray each one of them or should I just repent and start praying now? Will the sunnah prayers replace the obligatory prayers? Is it better to pray more sunnah or nafl? Or is it better to pray missed obligatory for the prayers first? All of these questions refer to the same ruling. And this video will have the complete answer inshallah. So let's start. First of all, fard prayer is a timed worship, which means it has to be done on time. There is no excuse for delaying it. If you can't stand up, pray sitting down. If you can't sit down, pray on your bed. If you can't move a muscle at all, pray with your eyes or with your heart. But it has to be done on time. If you don't have water for wudu, do tayammum. If you are tied in chains and you can't even do tayammum, pray without it. Quran chapter 4 verse 103 Indeed, performing prayers is a duty on the believers at the appointed times. Quran chapter 107 verse 4 and 5 So woe to the ones who pray, yet they are unmindful of their prayers. This is God promising punishment for those who do their prayers as show off, or those who do their prayers but they don't care to do it on time. The sin of passing the time of a fard prayer is more severe than adultery, is more severe than drinking, and is more severe than taking a life. And there are several very scary hadith talking about the severe punishment of this specific sin. So don't ever, ever miss any fard prayer again. Now, what if someone missed a fard prayer unintentionally? For example, he adjusted his alarm for fajr prayer and he slept. And the alarm for some reason didn't work and he overslept. In this case, there is no sin on him because God records your intention, not the action itself. Anyway, you should make up for it immediately when you wake up or when you remember it. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, من نام عن صلاة أو نسيها فليصليها إذا ذكرها لا كفارة لها إلا ذلك Whoever forgot or overslept a player, let him offer it as soon as he wakes up or remembers it. For there is no expiation for it other than that. What if someone stopped doing fard obligatory prayers claiming it's not an obligation? For example, someone claiming it's not an obligation to pray five times per day. Or someone claiming that hijab is not an obligation. Or someone claiming that fasting Ramadan is not an obligation. According to the consensus of Salaf scholars and modern scholars, this person is doing kufr and is not considered one of the Muslims anymore. If he or she dies, they should not be buried next to Muslims. Full stop. What if someone stopped doing fard knowing it is an obligation, but stopped out of laziness or carelessness? There are two schools regarding this issue. The first school says, all your life prayers are a debt to God that has to be paid. And the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, the debt of God should be paid. And according to Quran chapter 68 verse 42, on the day of judgment they will be called to prostrate, but they will be unable to, with their eyes subdued in reverence, humiliation overwhelms them. For they have been called to prostrate themselves when they were sound in dunya. They were fully capable, but they chose not to. So based on that, you should do your prayers in this life before you die, because you will have to do them anyway. It's much easier now than under the flaming hot sun of the Day of Judgment. The second opinion is from the school of al Hanabila. They say that whoever stops doing his obligatory fard prayers out of laziness or carelessness is kafir right away. He's not a Muslim anymore. Because the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, العهد الذي بيننا وبينهم الصلاة فمن تركها فقد كفر The covenant that is between us and them is prayers. Whoever leaves it commits kufr. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, بين الرجل وبين الكفر والشرك ترك الصلاة Between a man and leaving his prayers is kufr and shirk. So based on that, when you start praying again, you repent to God the same way a new Muslim does. As if you're saying your shahada for the first time in your life and accepting Islam for the first time. And in this case, you don't have to make up those missed prayers anymore. So which opinion should I choose? 
a lot of people don't know how to deal with difference in opinion. They think it's like a restaurant menu, you choose whatever you like. It's not like that. The reality is, we thank those scholars for the amazing effort they put trying to find the truth. They did what they can, but obviously, one of them is correct and one of them is wrong. They can't both be correct. So what you should do is, you should choose the action that will make you on the safe side, regardless which option is the correct one. So in our case, I would advise you to redo all your missed prayers now. And on the day of judgment, if the first school turns out to be the correct one, then you are safe. You don't have to pay any debt. And if the second school is the correct one, you are also safe. But if you take the risk and follow the second school and ignore the missed prayers now, what will happen on the day of judgment if they were wrong? Don't take any risk with your hereafter. And the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, what is halal is clear, what is haram is clear. But between them, there are certain doubtful things which many people do not know. So he who guards against doubtful things keeps his religion and his honor blameless. But he who falls into doubtful things fall into what is haram. In other words, when it comes to the gray area between halal and haram, don't risk it. Avoid it to be safe. If I choose the first opinion, how should I schedule my missed prayers? Let's assume you didn't pray at all for three years of your life. Simply pray every fard prayer twice for the next three years. And even if you die before that and you still didn't finish your debt, you already had the intention to do them. And we know from the famous hadith of the man who killed 100 people that you shouldn't be worried if you have the good intention. I will leave a link to this hadith in the description below if you want to read it. Anyway, whatever opinion you decided to follow, I have good news for you. Listen to this amazing hadith. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, the first thing that you will be asked about on the day of judgment is fard prayer. If you succeeded in it, then you succeeded in everything else. If you failed in it, then you failed and lost everything. But if it turns out to be incomplete, Allah will say, take from his optional extra prayers that he did, sunnah, nafl, night prayer and so on, and complete his obligatory fard prayers for him. Your sunnah, your nafl, your istikhara, your duha prayer, your night prayer, any extra prayer that you did in this life can replace a fard that you missed and forgot about. That doesn't mean that you missed them intentionally, but I'm talking about fard that you missed and forgot about. Someone might ask based on that hadith, can I just do a lot of sunnah instead of redoing the fard prayer that I missed? God said in this hadith Qudsi, The best way my servant can please me is with fard obligations. Obligations are more beloved to God than sunnah or nafl. And I want to respond to your question with another question. If I tell you that for four minutes, the sky will rain money, US dollars, free money for everyone. You can grab as much as you want, it will be yours. Will you grab $100 or will you grab $1,000 or both? I think your answer will be, of course, both or more. I will grab as much money as I can because after that, I will have a better life with this money. And this is exactly your life in dunya. You are trying to grab as much free money as you can for your Jannah. And the currency of Jannah is not US dollar. The currency of Jannah is good deeds and they are free. The more good deeds you grab now, the higher your rank will be in Jannah and the better eternal life you will have. Do both Fard and Sunnah and do more. Do as much as you can. It is your limited opportunity. When it's over, that's it. There is no coming back. And the more money, I mean good deeds, that you score now, the happier you will be, not for a hundred years, not for a thousand years, not for a billion years, for eternity. It's worth it. One last thing. Prayers is not only a debt you are paying to God. Prayer is a medicine that God prescribed you. It has a lot of benefits that you need. It strengthens your faith. It strengthens your self-control skills. It removes arrogance from your heart. And it removes the love of sin from your heart. It helps you break bad habits. It makes you care less about the hardships of this life. It helps you get rid of laziness. It decreases depression and anxiety and it brings you closer to Allah. 
So never think about it like that. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The first thing that everyone will be asked about on the Day of Judgment is obligatory for the prayers. If it's good, then all his deeds will be good. If it's bad, then all his deeds will be bad. Based on that, we understand that the prayer is the tool that will make you strong enough to fix your whole life and fill it with good deeds. Without it, it will be very difficult for you to fix your life and you will fall into sin a lot. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Deliver my message even as small as one verse. Don't let this video stop with you. Help it spread by engaging with it with likes, shares and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia Halo, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and Salaam alaikum.